do something for somebody this morning. But, uh, I'd ask you this morning, how many would like to be used by the Lord? You know, before I ever stand behind this pulpit, whether I'm trying to fill in for Richard or try to teach a class or just leave the foot, I always ask the Lord to use me. Yes, sir. I want him, I want to be able for the Lord to be able to use me, don't you? Yeah. And that's what I want to touch on this morning. You know, today is Palm Sunday. It's the beginning, the mark of the beginning of Holy Week. Today we read about Jesus' triumphant entry in Jerusalem, marking the week of Holy Week, and before the next Sabbath, he'll be tried, crucified, my Lord. It's the fulfillment of a, the prophecy 500, over 500 years before from Zechariah. The prophecy of Zechariah 9 now says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat of a foal of an ass. So 500 years before this happened, before this day, it was prophesied exactly how Jesus would enter his last time in Jerusalem. Let's read our scripture this morning, and then I want to touch upon a few things. And I promise I'll try not to hold you very long. You won't know to. <laughs> Chapter 11, verse 1, says, And when they came nigh to Jerusalem, to Bethany, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two disciples. He said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye enter into, ye shall find a colt tied whereupon never a man is set. Loose him and bring him. And if any man saith unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send them hither. Said, tell him that the Lord needs him, and when he's done with him, he'll send him straight back. And they went their way, and they found the coat tied at the door, without a place where two ways meet, met, and they loose him. And certain of them stood there, said unto them, Why do ye loosen the coat? They said unto them, even as Jesus commanded, and they let them go. And he brought the coat to Jesus, and they cast their garments on him, and he, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches of trees and straw them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest. Before we get started, I'd like for, to mention one thing. Hosanna, in this day and era, which use it as a word of praise, like hallelujah, hosanna. But if you go back to the Arabic and the translation of Arabic, what they were saying was, save us. Please deliver us. That's what they were shouting. They was wanting deliverance from the Roman, their Persecution from the Roman Empire. Little did they know that is exactly what Christ was coming that day to do. 
to save mankind, to deliver mankind from his body. And I just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> We've, I have heard, and I'm sure you've heard many and many times, many wonderful messages, many wonderful teachings of Palm Sunday. I, I've heard some really good ones. Yes, sir. I remember when your mother's pastor come, Brother Lee Holiday, mm -hmm. preached on let the Lord use what you got. He has need of what you got. He's got need of what you got. I've heard Zach and Toby and Andy and, and these guys teach why Jesus rode in on a donkey instead of a horse, instead of a great stallion, how he came meek and lowly, how the king come riding on a coat. Wonderful, wonderful lessons. But I believe the scripture is the living word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. And I believe every time you read it, I don't care how many times you've heard this story, I don't care how many times you've read this scripture, I believe that the Spirit of the Lord, God Himself can reveal something new to you every time you read it. I truly believe that. And today I want to talk and to touch on that little donkey. I'm interested in that little donkey. Mm, 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 mm. And I got to studying about that little donkey. Come on, Riley. You know, God said he had need. Jesus said he had need of him. He needed him, Richard, Thank to you. fulfill. Thank you. Now you think it. Jesus could have done this any way. Come on. He could have did it any way that he wanted to. The disciples could have put him up on his shoulders and carried him through town. Yeah. He, he could have had angels. He could have had chariots. He could have done anything mm -hmm. that he wanted. Yeah. But he chose. He was deserving. He chose to use the little donkey. And I got to thinking about that. You know, God still uses <coughs> little donkeys today. God does not need Roddy Vance. He don't need you, Richard. No, sir. He don't need none of us. But he chose. He could have had angels do the task. All he had to do was say, do this, do that. They would have never argued with him. They would have never had any. They would have went straight and did it. But he chose to use somebody like me, somebody like you, somebody like you. He chose to use human instruments in this great plan of salvation and to bring people to build this kingdom of heaven. Ain't that wonderful this morning? Sure is. Man. You know, the first thing you think about, if you think about a mule or a donkey, they're hard head, stubborn. I know if you're born or raised on a farm, many of you know, man, a donkey and a mule is a stubborn animal. Especially one that's never been raised before. But, we are the same way. We're hard headed, we're stubborn, but if we just allow the Spirit and allow God to use us, Try to get ourselves out of the way. But God chose us to help him in his plan. If I would have any name this, I would say the three R's. You'll tell your age if you're thinking reading, writing, and arithmetic. <laughs> That's not the three R's I'm talking about. First thing I want to 
think about on this little donkey. That donkey was only alive that day and was only available that day for the Lord to use because it had been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Did you know that? They live, you, we're talking about the law. We're talking about the Jewish law, the Mosaic law. The law says, God told it twice, once in Exodus 13, and he told them again in Exodus 34. Listen to what the Lord said. The Lord said, the, But the first of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. If thou redeem it not, then thou shalt break its neck. All the firstborn of thy son thou shalt redeem. None of them shall appear up before me empty. So the only reason that donkey was there that day, only reason that donkey was available that day, Richard, he'd been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Come on. The only way that you and I can be useful to the Lord, the only way that we can do the Lord's work, the only way we, only way we can do the Lord's will is we have to be redeemed. We have to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And that Lamb of Jesus Christ this morning, that donkey had to be redeemed. We have to be redeemed. See, in our natural state, we are born in iniquity. Shaped, born in sin, shaped in iniquity. This is our natural state. The Bible says that we, in Romans, said we are enemies of God in our natural state. There's an enemy between God and us. Ephesians says that we're dead in our trespasses in our natural state. John 3, 18 said that He didn't come to the world to condemn the world, but those who don't believe in Him are condemned already. So in our natural state, we're condemned by the Lord. Isaiah said we're separated by a great God. We're separated from God. No way to get to it in our natural state. Right. See, that's our natural state. But when we get redeemed, come on, buddy. But when we come to the Lord and Jesus saves our soul and we're redeemed, that all changes. That may be the way we come. But when we come and be redeemed, He says He gives us new life. He gives us an everlasting life. He gives us a heavenly life. He, get, he makes us complete. He changes completely. Any man in Christ Jesus, He's a new creature. One thing we need to understand is redemption, being redeemed, it's not an option. It's a necessity. Right. Jesus put it to Nicodemus this way. You must be born again. He didn't tell Nicodemus that you must join a church. Nicodemus was a leader of a church. Sure. He didn't tell Nicodemus, well, you've got to turn over a new leaf. He didn't tell Nicodemus, you must be baptized. He didn't tell Nicodemus, you must put your name on the church book or go to church. He didn't tell Nicodemus that he had to do some kind of good work. That's not being redeemed. Being redeemed is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's right. Being redeemed means there's a change in your life. Being redeemed means you've repented and you've turned a different way.
The only way that we can be useful unto the Lord is that we got to be redeemed from our lost condition. That's right. The second R I want to talk about this morning is many that I already talked about. It. Brother Bobby testified about it. That donkey had to be released. Jesus told his disciples, said, when you go, you'll find him tied up. Loosen him and bring him here. Just like us. When Jesus found us, we were bound in sin. We were chained, bound up, and only Jesus Christ could set us free. Ephesians says that we are born in this world as slaves to sin. We're under bondage the day that we're born in our natural state. We cannot bring glory to God or be useful to God or Jesus. Bam, Josh. We have to be set free. And that's exactly what Christ does for us. He sets us free. Titus said who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good work. And when we come to Christ, we are redeemed, and he sets us free. Say on verse 4, or verse 3, Jesus said, tell the guy that when I'm done with him, straightway I'll send him back hither. When we come to the Lord, we're a new creature. When Jesus sent that donkey back, that little coat back, it was different, Josh. It wasn't the same way it was when they picked him up. When he picked him up, that donkey was unbroken. Never a man had sat on him. When he picked him up, he was tied and bound. When the donkey came back to the man, he was broke. Ready for the saddle. He was loose and free. He was a whole lot better shape when he came back. And when he picked him up. Same way of us. We're a whole lot better off. We're a whole lot better shape after we meet and receive Christ in our life. You know, see, God is the best. I mean, he's the best at taking nothing and making something. Give in our hands, as our pastor preached a wonderful message one time, in our hands, it may not be much. But when we give it to him, we can make everything out of it, anything out of it. He took Abram, a pagan, and made him Abraham great man of faith. He took a man, Saul of Tarsha, a mean, cruel man, punishing Christians, punishing people. He made him, Paul, the great apostle. See, that's what God can do for us. When he breaks the chains of bondage and we give it our life to him, we can, he can take our broken life, our sin-scarred life, and he gives us back a new life. He'll take 
the mess that I made out of my life. He take all that mess and all that ugliness and all that darkness that I created in my life and I give it to him and he makes me brand new. He makes me a brand new man. And that's what he can do for you. The last or is one that a lot of people don't like, but it's a necessity. You got it. That donkey had to be ruled. Someone had to take charge over that donkey. That donkey didn't have a master. That donkey had never been rode before. That little coat and a wild animal. And it had to be ruled. God is not only my Savior. Jesus, Richard, is not my and your Savior. But he has to be our Lord. Can you call him Lord? Do you know what it means when you call him Lord? <clears throat> when we call him Lord, that means we are in submission to him. We are at his will. That donkey submitted himself to Jesus. Think about it. Just, just that Jesus rode that coat that morning that had never been set upon is a miracle in itself. Sure. Not only told me that he was sitting on a wild animal, but there was crowds all around shouting, hollering, Hosanna! That donkey didn't pay no attention to the crowds. He didn't pay no attention to the noise. But he submitted himself to Jesus. And that's what you and I have to do today. The world has all kinds of noise. The enemy will throw blocks in front of you, Tony. They'll, Satan is the best of just a bunch of noise all around. But don't pay no attention to that. Trust in Jesus. Submit yourself to Jesus. And let him be ruler of your life. God can do marvelous things if we just allow Him to be ruler of our life. One of the amazing statements found in these verses this morning, and I'll wrap this thing up. Jesus said, He was in need of a donkey. When did God ever need anything? The psalmist tells that he owns everything. He owns the cattle and a thousand hills. And he owns the earth, the heavens, and all the fullness there is. But he said he needed that donkey. Ain't that amazing? Just wanted to share that was the earthly life of our son. That is the way it was for our Savior, Jesus Christ, on this earth. He came as meek and as lonely as he could come. The one that fashioned everything, made everything, He possessed all the stars in heaven, yet he didn't have a place to lay his hand. He made everything that was made, Josh, and he borrowed a boat to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. He created every 
tree. But he was crucified on a hard cross. He created every rock, every mountain, but yet he was buried in a barred tomb. In a barred tomb. He rode clouds as his chariot. But yet on earth, he needed that little donkey to ride. Mm -hmm. It's so true, the Word of God said he was rich, but he came, became poor. So you and I may become rich. That's what he did it all for, folks. He did it out of love. You know, I would be proud this morning to be one of his little donkeys. To be redeemed, released, and ruled by Jesus this morning. One thing about, see it's not for my glory, or your glory. That little donkey rode, brought the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, into Jerusalem. All eyes was on Jesus. Nobody paid attention to that little donkey. And that's the way it's supposed to be. My last remark is this. Jesus told those folks, he said that you'll find him where two ways meet. Find him at a crossroad. This morning you're listening to my live stream or you're sitting in this church house, you're at a crossroad this morning. As Bobby, someone testified, you got a choice to make. Not making a choice means making a choice no. Yes, sir. Those men were standing at a crossroad that morning when Jesus needed them. You're standing here this morning and Jesus says, he has need of you. Jesus can take your life and do great works, do mighty things with you if you'll just allow Him to redeem you, release you, and rule you. You're standing at a crossroad. Won't you take that road toward Jesus? Bless you, man.